Why would I make them so uncomfortable? It probably has to do with your reputation. They feel your methods, your theories are... Spooky. Do you think I'm spooky? His face was so blank and expressionless. He didn't even seem human. I'm not turning my back on anyone! Have you ever found a metal implant in your body? Have you checked everywhere? Mulder, you have to understand! Put it down! You put it down first! Scully! What are we doing? Oh! I we're know, watching man. uh <laughs> we're watching the X Files. Is yeah. this a free one? This is a free one. Yeah. This is free. Yeah. It's free <laughs> for all. Hi everyone. Hello everyone! Welcome <laughs> to a brand new episode of Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Fmeum! I am one of your hosts, David Bell. Oh, I am a second in number of your hosts, Tom Ryman. And this is a free episode. We're giving this one out because we realized uh, we hadn't given one out in a while. Yeah, so you're getting this one for free, you lucky ducks. You lucky fucking ducks. And if yeah, you're interested... You quacking jerks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you can go to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed and you can get all these episodes for just five dollars a month along with a bunch of other episodes. We there's a lot of these, folks. We yeah. are up to s- season six here. Yeah. Uh this is uh I d I don't know if we have to explain this show. We're watching I mean, we the X Files. We're doing it listen, we're doing a chronological rewatching of the X Files, but specifically with an eye to how Malter behaves and yes. more specifically how out of his mind he behaves in every uh, in any given episode and the yeah. answer is completely yeah and how often he should be fired uh or <laughs> every put time. in jail every, every time. time most times and, <laughs> and yeah so we're 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 far into the series we're we have an episode for every fucking episode of this series mm-hmm. i think we doubled up one uh i forget which one I Did think we? it's the Emily, the Emily stuff. There was one of them that we doubled up because I think there wasn't much molder or something. I forget. Oh, that, our... we might have done a two part. I, you know what? I think yeah, I think it was the Emily one. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know when Doggett shows up, we'll probably have to skip around a bit. But for now, we've been plowing through. So we're at season six, episode fifteen. Or the other reason why this is a free episode, Arcadia. <laughs> Arcadia. This is one of the more classic late season episodes. Yeah. This is oh man. I actually looked for uh places to live in Arcadia. Oh and, really? This yeah. was actually this wasn't filmed in Arcadia. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of tell. Yeah, this was filmed um North Shore at Sherwood. Uh between the border between Los Angeles and Vent- Ventura counties. Um this is according to the end and the beginning, the official guide to the X Files. Mm-hmm. Um, the holy was it, text was Arcadia anything like this? Uh, it was f- super expensive. Yeah, that checks out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is about a planned community uh, where the 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 guy running the community has a trash monster that he summons if you break the rules of the what is it called the ccnrs ccnrs the yeah. um what is it contracts covenants and restrictions is what the book yeah. says and he keeps it on a fucking dais like a relic yeah. indiana jones is gonna steal <laughs> this was uh written by staff writer uh daniel arkin who uh was moving in new york in 1991 and his movers were late uh, and he he uh, violated the CCNRs and had to pay a thousand dollars. And he was like, "Fuck that!" Uh, and so yeah, basically the the first thing that happens to Mulder and Scully in this uh, yeah, is based it, off what the writer went through. Yeah, you're tempted to say, "Oh man, that sucks! What an injustice!" But you're the asshole who decided to move into a planned gated community. Right. Uh, so the thousand dollars is the tax you pay. So you don't have to live amongst the poors. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, um, don't care, buddy. Yeah. But this is a fun um, episode. Well, no, so no, no. Thank Sorry, you for, for the record, it was an apartment in New York. It wasn't a gated community. It was, it was like a, it's a co-op apartment in Greenwich village, which isn't to say Again. it isn't like a, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, the yeah. same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is Mulder and Scully go undercover. Uh, and it is, we're going to talk about that because the undercover aspect, uh, doesn't get them anything. Like, <laughs> no, I also, I just want to point out, can you imagine the FBI sending all this equipment 
in this neighborhood if it wasn't an upper class white community. Like, it's just very funny that they do all this work for a couple missing people. And it's like, Jesus, like, what, like, who is, who is making these decisions? Right. Uh, like, like putting down, well, you know, move, moving two agents into like, I don't know, a $2 million house. Yeah. Having movers like they don't, the FBI doesn't even move the equipment in themselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, this of course, uh, uh, has a big monster, which was just a foam rubber suit. It looked like shit. <laughs> Uh, so they, they even called it the shit monster. Well, yeah, that's what you, uh, cause it set. comes out of the sewer. It is a shit monster. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, uh, so they, you know, a lot of lighting, a lot yeah, of tricks. It they looks actually, good in the episode. Yeah. They do a good job. Um, you never really see it, but you don't need to. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a pretty familiar X-Files trick because the show generally only has a certain amount of money, uh, to spend yeah. on any, any creature effects. And also they're limited because this is what, 1999 when this came out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So effects the, on TV in 1999 weren't super, super advanced. Uh, so, but they do a good job good. Of, of, yeah, of shooting around the fact that it doesn't look good. It, it, it's it's effective the way they do it. Going into the planned community idea, I will say I really like the first version of the script was that it's a planned community where uh, uh, a criminal moves in or like an infamous type of, like, you know, like someone perhaps with a darker complexion uh, and they manifest their fears their xenophobic fears into a monster. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. Um, but instead, they made it a tulpa, uh, which we'll get into. We sure will. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. What Tulp- else is- Tulpas are hot this year. We got uh, the empty man. Yeah, yeah. We love we love those tulpas. Uh, Jillian Anderson really enjoyed this. Oh, I thought this was a funny detail because I noticed it watching is that David Duchovny, they, <laughs> they have some fun with his wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Jillian Anderson, I noted when I was watching it, is like, she's just wearing Scully's outfit, but lighter colored. Yeah. And in the behind the scenes, they say that is indeed what we did. Uh, As they put it, uh, Jillian was a little tougher because she has a look that she doesn't want to give up. She's very savvy that way. So I don't know if that's Jillian Anderson was like, I'm not wearing any of that shit. (laughs) Just just give me Scully's clothes, but lighter. Uh, I I don't know. I I can see that because there's not a lot of... It's certainly at the time uh, when the show started in the early '90s, uh, not not as many roles for uh, serious professional women, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I, I can totally see. It's like, no, I've got my I've got my business look. I've got you know, Scully's a very specific character. She's very serious. Yeah, um, it makes sense. Yeah, whereas Mulder's uh, a, a big idiot. So. Yes. One of the harder things was the uh, prop master Tom Day couldn't find a goddamn whirly gig to save his life. Uh, he eventually had to he ha- he like went to all these stores. He couldn't find anything. He eventually ha- found a f- like a friend of a friend who had one. Um, oh, and they smashed it. Yeah. Well, no, he recreated it. Oh. He made a replica. What? So they just built one anyway? Just well, built the I, fucking no, thing, I, guys. I, I assume well, the way the props work is they always make like five. Right. Because of how, yeah. So I assume they had different versions of it based off this one. But yeah, like, I don't know. Google A, a, Google whir- a whirly gig is not that hard to build, guys. Yeah. Um, to do the dog coming out of the storm drain, I think this is funny because you do not see it in the episode. They created a catapult with a rubber dog. <laughs> Right, it, do, it does. The dog out. It does fire out of the sewer yeah, it does. <laughs> like a cannon. It 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 almost gave my wife a heart attack. We were watching the episode oh, that's great. together. It's so unexpected, uh, and it happens so fast. That's great. <laughs> um, the final bit of information I want to share because I think this is neat. Nothing to do with the episode. The researcher Lee S- Smith was looking into like landfills and sewage systems. And he talked to someone, he was finding diagrams of cities and stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, and he asked New York for a diagram, and they laughed in his face, and they told him that they had one guy around 80 80 years old who was the only person who knew what it was like under the streets of New York. Apparently, before he died, they tried to get him to write it all down, but he died, and that just feels very New York. That's like, yeah, we have no idea what our sewer system that's is. Like, well, that's like, there was like one 80-year-old who knew. 
that's like I think that's an alarming number of cities in America where we just yeah I mean that's cities you know like the fucking catacombs underneath Paris like there's a lot of places where like we don't know what the hell's down there it makes sense it it does make sense because a lot of cities like they don't know what the fuck they're doing at first like you ever drive in Boston like they clearly didn't plan for the amount of like cars or that cars would exist yeah so a lot of cities pretty older ones are just built on top of themselves so yeah that yeah. makes total sense that they just have no goddamn clue it's like that's yeah. i don't know man a, a minotaur there could be anything down there there could be, there could be a fucking minotaur yeah, the, the uh, fucking manhattan minotaur <laughs> oh, that sounds like a mascot um all right well yeah that's behind Wandering the scenes around the sewers eating ninja turtles probably yeah that's why the Ninja Turtles could thrive. Um, so I guess we can get into, I don't know, our first section. We can, but Dave, real quick, Cowabunga. Yes. Get it? Because it's yeah. a cow. Because it's, it's a cow. It's and a, a cow man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now we can move That on. makes sense. Where he'd be like, talk about Cowabunga. Like, yeah. it, it, I'm <laughs> imagining like one of the cartoon episodes. It wasn't there. Um, yeah. Bullseye. Yeah. Well, the wait, is Bullseye the one that's just a. There's what there was an episode where it was just a cow that like oh. had the mutagen and it became this like killer bull. That's do you that's, remember that? Episode? Yeah, that's bullseye. That is bullseye. Yeah. They gave it a name. Yeah, it was just a well, wait. There's angry like a cow. there's like an angry red bull man that has like a target reticle for an eye. That's I think his name is bullseye. Anyway. And that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Though. I'm talking about the episode where it becomes like Super Shredder of a bull, where it's it's not like talking, it's not walking on two legs, it doesn't have a name. Oh, okay. It's just That's a, a different character, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, anyway, that was... What are we doing? Oh, yeah. World's Luckiest Detective. <laughs> all right. These, this is a section devoted to all the times Mulder just lucks into the answer, because boy, does he. Um, he sure does, Dave. They usually get help. In this case, we have Mike, the veterinarian, who, uh, lucky for them, like survives under in that the is a, that sewers. That is like the weirdest. Yeah, that's the weirdest plot twist of this episode because he gets attacked. First of all, I believe this actor he definitely played in uh, in in uh, orderly on ER. And yes, I'm, he I'm, he actually. I'm he pretty was, sure his name was. Issues. I'm pretty sure his name is also Mike on ER. Oh, I'm nice. pretty sure, uh, but <laughs> he he gets attacked by the the shit monster in like the first ten minutes, and we see him explode. Like they show <laughs> they show his mat that says Big Mike's place, and just a fucking balloon of Big Mike gore bursts all over the doorstep, and then he just comes back later. <laughs> yeah, Big Mike, and then he it's like Danny to explode and again. Hawk. Yeah, it's like absolutely. what? How the fuck are you alive? <laughs> yeah. And he he protects Scully. Uh, he he gets sacrifices his again. life. Yeah, yeah. I like the character. He's just like a gentle giant. Is the idea, uh, and uh, it, yeah, <laughs> it is. It's very weird. He's fucking with all the people. He's the one who's he's trying to sick the trash monster on them because they did it to him. Uh, it, it's it's lucky. I would say the biggest thing. So Mulder doesn't try to interrogate anybody. He he's he does, very he does his, a little bit. They go a to, little bit. They go to dinner with their neighbors, Wynn and his wife. And Scully picks on that Wynn's wife is re- picks up that Wynn's wife is real anxious and nervous. So he, she's like, "Hey, I got to go walk the dog." And Scully's like, "Well, I'll come with you." So she uses that our opportunity to do some, you know, uh, surreptitious interrogating. Mulder yeah. like attempts one or two questions, but the rest of the time he's just having too much fun pretending to be Rob Petrie. Yes, and he he spends most of his investigation just fucking with the the rules. Right, he wants um, to see what's going to happen if he yeah. keeps breaking the rules. Yeah, Scully actually like tries to interrogate them a little more. I'll, I I guess the luckiness for me is that this community is filled with the worst liars ever. Because <laughs> every time she mentions somebody, they just like get quiet and disturbed, and and then they like change the subject, and it's like. Oh, so you're obviously hiding something. Mm-hmm. Um, another lucky aspect of this is that it's a big neighborhood, right? It it's deceptively big because we only ever see, we only really spend time at like the house that they're in and like their neighbor's house. So we spend most of the time on one street. But there's a couple of shots where you see that it, like it goes up into the hills behind yeah. them. Like it's a big. There's probably I don't know a hundred homes. 
Yeah, so most of these people are sticking with the the fucking the rules, lest they yeah. get killed by a trash monster. I guess the luckiness is that they they like the one of the first people they talk to, Big Mike, is the f- next target. Um, it could be a random neighbor up that hill. Like they, there's no way of knowing. Um, they just plop themselves directly in to like like their neighbor is the guy most involved mm-hmm. with the. Tulpa. He's like he's like the second he's in second. command. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, lucky that the dog randomly runs into the sewer and she finds Big Mike's necklace. Like, there's a lot of little moments like that where they just, uh... Yeah, stumble ass first into clues. Yeah. Also, Mulder was assigned this. And, I mean, this is an overall thing in a lot of these episodes. He's, like, bummed at first that it's just missing persons. Yeah. And then it's a fucking trash monster. And it's like, well, there you go. Yep, they had no way of knowing that it was a trash monster. They were no just way like, of knowing. Let's. They, Mulder's still benched from, you know, six yeah. years of antics. So they probably sent him here on this assignment because it's like, well, this is something that can keep Mulder, uh, you know, under under wraps for a little while, uh, and and it's it's something he can't possibly screw up. This is a straightforward missing persons case. It can't go out of control, and then it just happens to be a shit monster. Yeah, exactly. Um. They're lucky that the Tulpa kills the old man, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and they're lucky that that's what gets rid of the Tulpa, because uh, that's all, like, the Tulpa, you don't really know what it, like, it's it's not, it's it's not exactly like a precise uh, assassin. No, and it, we see, we, <laughs> Mulder goes inside the, the head of the community, the head of the Homeowners Association, whose name is... His, his, he has like a dark Gogolek. wizard. Gogolek. Yeah, he's, he fucking sounds like a dark wizard. Yeah. So right there already. He looks like, well, like a dark wizard. Yeah, he totally does. So Mulder goes into his, his fucking wizard's lair um, and sees all this statuary and he happens to notice uh, this. He, he's, he looks at some wooden idol for a second. And then later he finds the Whirly Gig and it has Pier 9 imports imported from Malaysia. And that's all the clues we see until the last yes. scene when Mulder just walks up clutching that wooden idol and is like, you made a Tulpa. Yeah. When you were out in Ma- so Malaysia, you found a Tulpa. And so like Mulder vomits out the existence of a Tulpa, the fact that the shit monster is a Tulpa, and the rules of the Tulpa 30 wanted- seconds before the Tulpa is destroyed. <laughs> Yeah, I, w- I, I want to get more into that in the next section, yes. but yes. Um, so that was just, extremely As lucky. always, yeah, he just guesses what the thing is. And then, yeah, the thing doesn't kill him, because it could have killed him. Um, it tries it kills- to, but the old man dies, and so it, it, crum- yeah, exactly. it crumbles into shit dust. Yeah. Uh, and again, very lucky. Yeah. This is all very lucky. Um, sh- should we get in the next section? I mean, probably. Should we put on our little pink uh, polo shirt? Put on our, put on our pink uh, uh, alligator polo shirts. Uh, mm. Tie a little sweater around our necks. Um, yes. Start shooting hoops at 1030 at night to provoke the neighbors. <laughs> uh, and pour orange juice all over your mailbox. <laughs> because it's time for Mulder After Dark. drink that sax like orange juice straight from the carton he drinks the entire thing of orange juice yeah he does he sits and he he (laughs) he goes outside all right so Mulder gets there his game plan pretty much from jump is to just keep pushing the envelope in terms of the the ccr the community rules to see what's going to happen because it's clear that everybody's petrified of breaking the rules yeah also what a Mulder, like, you know Mulder personally hates that idea. Right, like, he, even if it wasn't connected at all to the investigation, which at this point he has no reason to believe that it is. He's just like, oh, these yeah. people are really uptight. I'm, Mulder has, we've talked about it before, Mulder definitely has oppositional defiance disorder. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, he does not like being told what to do. So he would have done this anyway, <laughs> like, yes. if it wasn't when related he, to the investigation at all. When he digs the reflecting pool, he's having a blast. Um, and then later when he's digging at night and Scully has to call him inside, like his mom. Yeah. She's like, the clients aren't down there, sweetie. Um, yeah, he, he fucking, this is his jam. Absolutely. Uh, fucking with the, the, the CCNRs. Again, he has no, they're acting uptight about it and a little fishy about it, but he's there to investigate three missing couples like three missing homeowners like uh, yeah. whole families of people 
Um, and he f- he, fix- he fixates on on the community rules because they're uptight about it, but he's got no reason to believe, and there's nothing to indicate that it's connected in any way to these people disappearing. It's just yeah. it's lucky that it happens to be the exact reason they disappeared. But he spends the entire episode just kicking his mailbox, putting f- lawn flamingos out, digging a pool, like just fucking with his neighbors right. because he doesn't like to be told what to do. Right. Meanwhile, Scully's trying to investigate. She's like doing analysis. She's driving to San Diego and, to yeah, get yeah. like analysis of the blood they find in the house. Like Mulder doesn't do anything but fuck with the neighbors. Right. And like you said, it could have nothing to do with the murders. Right. Uh, they could like, just if be didn't. a bunch of uptight rich people living in the hills, Malter. Right. <laughs> and he would have wasted all this time yeah. just fucking with them. Um, we should probably talk about Mulder and Scully undercover. Again, Scully's dressed like a cop. Like, Scully, I will say, like, she's not, she's half-assing it, I feel like. Yeah. Because, like, at any point, it's like she really feels like a cop. Um, Mulder's got his pink shirt. <laughs> Mm-hmm. slightly unbuttoned tucked, tucked into, into his, his pants. khakis yeah yeah he's wouldn't he won't stop putting his hand around scully yeah, every chance I, he gets yeah this is yet another lawsuit from scully um he loves this yeah he loves it this is he the says, happiest he's ever been <laughs> yes he says you didn't let me carry you over the threshold um he he he! Like when they're gonna when they're gonna look over the place, she's like, "You ready?" He's like, "Let's get it on, honey." Uh, he loves playing house, which is very funny because then he accuses Scully of wanting to play house. He says, "Admit it, you just want to play house later." And it's like, "Motherfucker, Mulder, <laughs> that's all you've been doing. That is the only thing you've done." Yeah, you pulled up some carpet when we got here, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you you get out of the bed, Mulder. When he's like in the bed, and he's and he's like, and he's like, like he's he's trying to be. He says, "Oh, come on, Laura, we're married now." And it's yeah. like you are larping a relationship right now. <laughs> it's the closest Mulder. he's ever gonna get. Yeah, it's true. And it's in the I next l- morning when he's telling their neighbor, he's like, "Oh yeah, we spooned like two kittens. <laughs> we spooned up and fell asleep like little baby cats." <laughs> it's like, all right. He makes Scully. He's, I love that he 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 makes Scully into spiritualism, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the name that he chose, Robin Laura uh, Pet Petrie. Petrie, which is La- Robin Laura Petrie is the main characters in the Dick Van Dyke show. Which, if you like, isn't that kind of dangerous to do? Like that old man surely remembers that show. You would think. Yeah, like Mulder is. Although I get he's the not, sense he's that, that old, that, that, it old uh, that old wizard bastard doesn't watch much TV. That's true, but like still, but you, like right, the, yeah. terrible cover names. Uh, but whatever, I think Mulder he doesn't give a shit. The whole point is he doesn't right, give it's, a shit. It's, it's it would be like he if he came into the community introduced himself as George Jefferson. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like what? <laughs> really? Exactly. That's your name? Yeah, I love the genuine moment because. Mulder and Scully, they later get together and they later have a relationship and they, they give us, and it was very smart. They give us one like genuine relationship moment, which is when they're eating and they're talking about dolphin safe tuna. And he goes, you got to love those dolphins. Although they're pretty tasty too. And no one laughs. And so Scully forces a laugh. That just felt like Mulder was actually trying to be funny. That was, it was, that was Mulder genuinely making a joke. And because he's such a fucking Martian, uh, Scully had to like (laughs) kind of, uh, drive home, like tell, she's, she's telling the room that he's joking. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, and that's also uh, during that dinner, he's he's keeping up like the Rob Petrie thing, he, you know, just yeah. saying stupid bullshit. And then he randomly like he can't he as f- as much fun as he's having uh, playing house, he can't keep himself from being Mulder for too long. Oh, yeah. So he course. starts launching into some some of his odd bullshit in the middle of right. that dinner. I forget exactly what he says, but he very abruptly starts interrogating his neighbor as Mulder. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um he yeah, he 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 can only do so much. Right. He's got uh, he's, he's gotta, better yeah. Yeah. He's more into it when they're alone or when they're fucking when she's videotaping it. Oh yeah, I have that and written he says, down. You want to make that honeymoon video now? 
and into like, the well, camera, they're... and she's do- this is an official FBI yes. document she's she, recording. This... People are gonna have to. Uh, Your boss watch is gonna that. watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Like, there's got to be a moment where Skinner's like, Mulder, you know you're very lucky that Scully hasn't sued the the Bureau, yeah, right? Yeah, he, like, yeah. she would have, the, she would have the case, like, the court case of the century. Like, it would last for weeks of just going through the evidence. Yeah, it's, I'm just picturing Skinner watching that tape, getting to that scene, and just sighing, taking off his glasses, and calling his lawyer. Yeah. He's like, uh, yep, I'm about to get sued again. <laughs> Uh, Mulder um, also makes Scully carry their welcome basket. Like he does not attempt to help her. Of course, of you course. Notice that? Yeah, that's great. Like, it's this huge basket that it just they, <laughs> they just shove into Scully. It's like it's almost it's like literally half the size of her, and she's yeah. struggling to carry it. And Mulder doesn't even look at her. <laughs> <laughs> she's fucking trying to muscle this thing inside the house. Of course, of course. <laughs> oh man. Um, oh, he's th- like such a there's, goblin. <laughs> there's absolutely no way she didn't catch him watching pornography during this. Um, yeah, like it's it's just man. It, it's you know it's he brought a, some. He definitely he brought, brought he some. definitely brought some. Oh God, imagine it. Just imagine being in a house with Mulder. So there's for a, days. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 having to pretend to be married to him yeah um the detail about they move in like they have a moving company and their neighbors help them carry their boxes inside but the boxes all contain their fbi equipment like scully's lab gear which gets dropped uh which is why she has to drive to san diego later in the episode to get stuff analyzed but it's like right. all this expensive investigation equipment like official fbi equipment that you would think if they're going to the trouble of having Mulder and Scully be undercover as homeowners and pull whatever strings they need to to buy the house, lease the house, I don't know, because they can't, you know, they had right. to, they had to do something to get that house. They couldn't just take it. Yeah, they could. They couldn't just move um, in. Yeah, because then the community would know. Um, yeah. So I I really feel like. Putting all the stuff into moving boxes was Mulder's idea. Yeah, it definitely wasn't. Yeah, like because you could have you had the FBI just pose as the movers and right. have a bunch of FBI guys move that stuff in. Yeah, but Mulder's like, you- no, we must complete the illusion, or else they'll see right through it. <laughs> and it's really weird because like they're supposed to be like upper class. Like it's more suspicious that they don't have movers. Right. Yeah. It's very weird. Um, I, just, I, I love that he, in my mind, that was his idea because he's so excited to play house. Right. Also, like, you can hire, like, agents to, like, mow your lawn to act like they're working on the electricity. Like, you could have agents in and out. It's all on Mulder and Scully. Yeah. Um, the right. scene, they could, yeah. They could have had a lot more surveillance going on. Like, it's, it's yeah. ridiculous. Put, set up cameras. Right? Set up cameras. It's ridiculous that it's just the day. two of them. Yeah, he spends an entire day fucking with his lawn, drinking, chugging orange juice, making himself have to piss, refusing to piss in the orange juice carton for some reason. He's like a child in that scene. Like, he, he knows he has to do a stakeout. So he chugs an entire thing of orange juice, and then he's like, oh, I gotta pee. It's like over it's... the course of two hours, though. Yeah. Because he's yeah, a no. maniac. He sits yeah. He sits in front of his front door, peering out the window at his mailbox, waiting for something to happen for right. hours. That's, his, that's how he investigates. That's his, that's his, uh, his yeah, his, his, his tried and true investigation technique. Yeah. I'm just going to um, stare at this until something happens. Like, we know that is, because he just makes, like, slideshows and shit. He's just yeah. staring at it until something happens. Like Wait. the doll episode, where he's just staring at the doll. Right? Yeah, that's how, I mean, we talked about it. It's how Mulder... It, tr- yeah. we ha- it, it happens often enough that we've talked about it more than once. <laughs> I want to talk about how he figures it out. Because... Yeah. As you as you said, he sees the whirly gig. It has the the imports on it. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes over to the guy's house. He handcuffs him. Mm-hmm. Um, he has no arrest warrant. He has no. He just handcuffs this old guy. And the part that's amazing is uh, 
the line is, um, won't that sound good in a court of law? When the judge asks you who killed the Kleins, what exactly are you going to tell them? To which to- uh, to Mulder looks around, mm-hmm. sees the statue, picks it up and goes, a tulpa. He is improvising. He sure is. <laughs> he just sees, like, he's just seeing this guy came from Tibet. So his, like, racist ass brain is like, oh, it's got to be magic. There's got to be magic involved. Yeah. What are, um, what are the magic monsters of Tibetan folklore? Yeah. And when the guy asks him, what are you going to tell the judge? Um, it's so funny that he's like, oh, easy. I'm going to tell him that you're magic. And it's like, oh, Mulder. Uh, but. It's just really, really telling that he completely pulls that out of his ass. You see him, you see the wheel spinning, <laughs> and he, Mulder has a man handcuffed saying, like, what do you think happened? And he just picks up a random object, and he's like, ah, it's this. He sure does, It's the Tulpa. Babe. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, eh, Tulpa. He says, son, my lawyers are going to make you sound so stupid, and like, yeah. I'm thinking, Your lawyers aren't going to have to do much, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this ever went to court, it would be this. I'm just wondering how many times Mulder in court, where they're like, Agent Mulder, what do you think it is? And he's like, uh, g- gavel monster. And it's like, are you just looking at my gavel right now, sir? Like, he-, he really just pulls it right out of his ass. Right, it's the Stephen King gag from Family Guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a land monster. <laughs> <Like> what? <laughs> it really is that. Like, he decides it's a tulpa in the moment, mm-hmm. and then is right. Yeah, it just happens to be his. No, he's got nothing to go on. He's got he, like some trash res- residue that they found on the ceiling fan in the house yeah. they're in. That's it. It's like he knows he has plot armor at this point. Like he knows, like if I just guess what it is, I bet it's that. that. It will become that. Whatever yeah. I whatever I say it is, it will become that. Yeah, and he's completely right. Of course and he, he does is. not deserve to be. <laughs> He never it's, deserves it's to be. It's irresponsible to keep letting him be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, man, what an episode. I don't have much more for um, Mulder After Dark. No, it's 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 just truly incredible to watch him delight in playing house and be so angry at the, uh, the community rules and do very little detective work. Yeah. It's a it's another one where you just completely lux into it. Right. It's like a group um, project where you had one person who wasn't doing shit. And that's Mulder. Yeah. That's Mulder every time. Yeah. Cause basically he just digs up he digs up the whirly gig and and that's it. That's and it. He has no idea if that thing was connected to anything. He just found he learned that they're over a landfill. He digs into the landfill, finds a piece of trash that has the import like the the pier one imports on it uh and he's like it's that man and that's it that's it and it's yep. like or that's just a piece of trash molder that you just found <laughs> yeah or you <laughs> dug into a mountain of trash and found a piece of trash <laughs> yeah and he is a hundred percent correct yep yeah um god damn it molder uh do you want to talk about fireball offenses sure okay so Obviously, his conduct in on the evidence tape, not great. Yeah, his conduct throughout, he's yeah. just sexually harassing Scully, using their undercover status as a pretense to do it. Yeah. But there's a bigger one in this, which is that, so Mulder handcuffs that old man, again, with no, like, he can't. He can't do that. He doesn't have, he's a, he has nothing. He has nothing to go by. Um, he then, he essentially kidnaps that man. And when he learns that the tulpa is out, he drags him out in front of his house. He handcuffs him to a mailbox. And then that man is beaten to death. Yep. He's, <laughs> cl- he's clubbed to death by a shit demon. In Mulder's custody. Yep. Um, and it, here's the thing is, even if, even if the FBI is like, okay, we believe you about this tulpa. You still handcuffed this man and he was murdered. Yeah, it's... Um, in your custody, that's bad. It's the, bad. It is the second time this has happened. Because if you'll recall, yes. <laughs> yeah, in the gondola hijacking episode, um, Dwayne Barry, or, or the sequel, uh, yeah. he has a, he has Dwayne... Ascension. Ascension. He's got Dwayne Barry in custody, in his custody, and Dwayne Barry is suffocated to death in his yeah. custody. Now, in granted, custody. Krychek does it, not Mulder. But on paper, Mulder did it. 
Right, and here's how I'm gonna here's here's how this is going to look. Right, on because paper, here's the this, thing. he handcuffed a 68 year old man to a mailbox, and then that man was beaten to death while still handcuffed to the mailbox. Exactly, and there's no evidence of a tulpa. Right, they say at the end <laughs> that the neighbors deny the tulpa. They just say that Mr. Gogolek is responsible. But they don't say how. Nobody, they refuse to speak. And so what it's going to look like is that Mulder beat this old man to death. It sure and then does. Threat- and then threatened everybody. Yep. <laughs> they're all like, yeah, it was him. It was him. It was him. Yeah, it was that old guy. Definitely not like, an FBI agent terrifying us into silence. Skinner's going to have to always think like, did Mulder beat that old man to death? We'll never know. Like, Maybe, maybe it is this trash monster Mulder's talking about. I guess it could be, but it's there's a not zero percent chance that Mulder beat this old man to death while he was handcuffed to a mailbox. Once again, we're talking about Mulder is would be the subject of a Netflix true crime documentary it where must... they'd look at the file and they'd be like, he clearly beat the man to death. Right. Yeah. Like Mulder, there would be so many different social media hashtags about Mulder. Um, yeah. That must always be in the back of Skinner's mind, right? Like, it must always yeah. be in the back of his mind. It's like, what if? Like I, like, I believe Mulder, and he believes in the supernatural and all this stuff, but he must always be wondering, what if he's lying? Yeah. What if he's the one killing all these people? Because what are the odds that every fucking week he finds something supernatural? Like, there's, there's this thing where um, people who are really skilled at a sport or a game actually tend to be the people who end up cheating. Because in their heads, they, uh, they think, well, I'm good at this. I might as well cut some corners. It's that idea of like, yeah, you know, like, or I, des- everybody knows I deserve, I'm, I deserve it. Yeah. So like, how often would Mulder be like, yeah, it's a ghost. <laughs> and it's like super not a ghost. And he's like, whatever, man, I'm just going to write ghost on this file. Uh, yeah, I hit, I hit a guy with my car, but I'm just going to write here that he's a ghost. Boom. He Mulder, was it's not a ghost. a ghost. I've already written it down. It's done. Yeah. It's probably a ghost, Scully. It was probably a ghost. It was definitely a ghost. You saw yeah. it. Look, how, when, when am I ever wrong? I didn't it see anything. Ghost. I yeah. saw nothing. I saw you hit a man with your car. <laughs> but he was a ghost. He was so. pale. Scully, he was pretty pale. It's he fine. Was, he was pretty pale. He looked like a ghost. He was floating. Yeah. He, was flo- he was flying through the air because you struck him with your car. <laughs> it still yeah. counts, Scully. You saw him. You just said you saw him fly. <laughs> writing that down. I'm writing Scully saw him fly fly period <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i mean so like there's that that is how Mulder's career would inevitably end is like him i mean i hope like so. screaming about tulpas and shit and they're just having to drag him away um and this could be it this could be the breaking point where Mulder beats an old man to death we don't know that's how it's gonna look on paper yeah the, the there's official, no getting around that anyone who reads that is gonna be like i'm pretty sure he handcuffed this man, this old man to a mailbox and beat him to death. Who else could it be? Big Mike is dead. Scully will, will be like, yeah, Big Mike got killed in the house. Um, like, there's, a, there's the, a presence, but, like, even with the presence, like, it was last seen in the house, Mulder brought the man, handcuffed him, and, like, two seconds later, that man gets beaten to death. It's like, yeah, who, who the fuck else would it be? Yeah, who could it be? Yeah, uh, if if they yeah if they don't accept a tulpa, it's there's only one other dude. <laughs> and odds are person, they probably won't. <laughs> yeah, who in this who in this scenario has a long history of being unhinged? Right. <laughs> who who has gone publicly to say the FBI is out to get you? Briefly joined a terrorist group. Who uh, whoops here? has previously had a got a suspect die in their custody. Yeah, who has on file killed a man and then shot his face off with a shotgun and assumed his identity <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing Mulder did it's Mulder <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I don't know it, 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 maybe you know maybe they should look into this we should name the enabler oh we sure um, should I think it's Skinner because you said at the start of this that Skinner f- thought this was probably easy I feel like Skinner knew what he was doing, right? Where he was like, you two, like he saw, he saw the recommendation of like the agents will have to go undercover as a married couple. He chuckled to himself for like five minutes and then oh, he gave true. it to Mulder yeah, and Scully. He probably thought this was funny as shit. 
Yeah, he was probably like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have just the agents for this. Because, like, as Mulder says, like, why would they assign me this? It's just a missing persons. And he's right. Like, why would they give it to Mulder if not because they just thought it was funny? I mean, like, it's the kind of decision I would make. Yeah. Well, it's the reason they wrote the episode. Yep. It's like, oh, what a delightful idea. Yeah, this will be funny. <laughs> yeah. You think Mulder went out and bought those clothes? He must have. <laughs> I'm sure Mulder went out as soon as he learned he had this assignment. He probably spent $6,000 on clothes yeah. and billed it all to the FBI. Yeah, clothing and like 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 personal items and yeah. like a whole, a he wrote a whole character hoop. for himself. He bought a basketball, a basketball hoop. hoop. Oh my God, of course he did. You're right, because he doesn't have that. That's not, wow. Yeah, that's, he doesn't, like, he lives in an apartment. Mm -hmm. That's not, like, his. He bought that for this assignment. He sure did, Dave. Yeah, he didn't need that. Like, not, he didn't need to play basketball for this assignment. I mean, they didn't know that it was the rules were going to be the thing. Like, they had no idea. All they knew was just a bunch of honkies That's an excellent missing. point. They had no idea that yeah. upsetting the rules was going to be an issue. He brought that basketball hoop. Yeah, he had the FBI. He saw an opportunity. Look, no one can blame him. He was like, you know what? The FBI could pay for this basketball hoop. Whereas, you know, he took that with him. You know, it's like crammed in that room in his apartment filled no, with of boxes. Of course. Of course it is. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, Crazy like a fox, then? I think so. Folks, it's time. This is the portion of the episode where yeah. we assign a numerical rating from 1 to 10 to grade Mulder's behavior in the episode. Um, one being fairly restrained, professional, responsible, of a representative of the federal government. 10 being the opposite of all of those things I just said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this isn't that high. Uh, Mulder, in having, terms of... Having a... a, a <laughs> A 68-year-old man clubbed to death so severely that the the mail the 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 arm that you handcuffed to a mailbox is almost broken off of his body. It's not good. It's not like, great. He, he is responsible for that man's death. Um, and we the way we always gauge this is like one through three uh, would be like Mulder's ask, acting, you know, funny. Um, yeah, just but odd like, behavior. Like, just, just yeah, displaying that, socially unacceptable behavior. Yeah, after that, it's, like, really, like, reputation stuff and, like, like public acts of, of, of unhingedness. Uh, and then after that, it's endangering other people's lives. Or, no, it's endangering his own life. And then finally, around when we hit 10, it's, like, when he's endangered, for example... A plane full of people's lives. Yeah, um, or like hijacked a gondola at gunpoint. Yeah. If he does something that's just above and beyond. Uh I would put this probably around the middle. Maybe yeah. a five. Let's say a five. I think this is this a solid feels, five. Yeah, I think this is a solid five as well. Because he's me, you know, he 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 stakes this old man out in the field like the goat in Jurassic Park. Yes. Um he keeps harassing Scully. <laughs> Yeah, like he's not he's not trying to kill that man. That's what makes it down to a 5. It's just he handcuffs a man to a mailbox while there's a fucking monster out. And he knows that he created the monster, so he doesn't feel that bad. But it's like, yeah, you are putting that man at danger. Uh yeah, the, I think I think 5 works. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm good with a 5. I'm good with it. Yeah. I think yeah, the 5 yeah. is a fair representation of Mulder in this episode. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I'm looking back at our past ones. We gave Pusher a one. And I know why. Because push like Mulder says some wild shit in Pusher. Uh he doesn't do it all any of it um under his own free will. Yes. Yeah. Um Space was a five. The, yeah. This is like a space. This is exactly like a space. If you remember space. that's the one where Mulder is geeking out with he NASA. He loves NASA so much. Yeah. And so it's like an episode where it's more about Mulder's personality and yeah. not about his actions. Yeah, um, so we exactly. learn a lot about him here. Yeah, this is a real window into Mulder's, the it way really Mulder is. thinks. Yeah. Um, well, shit, that's an episode, folks. Ah, oh, we've done it. We've done it. Yeah. Listen, um, as I said at the top of this, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. 
you go on there, you not only get this for $5 a month, you get Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Star Trek The Next Futurama. Uh, and, and it, you know, it's, you get to support us and and uh, that's cool. So, yeah, check that out. And then in a few weeks, we're going to be covering uh, uh, Alpha. You're excited for the X-Files episode Alpha, right? Yeah, you want to see us talk about Alpha or listen to yeah. us talk about Alpha, rather. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, that's a thing. I mean, that. we're coming up. We're coming up on the unnatural, the one oh, written and directed man. by David Duchovny. <laughs> There's gonna be some juicy shit. In the yeah, future. it's it's now's the time. If you're not if you're not already a patron, uh, get on board. Yeah, we're gonna hit season seven, and things are gonna start falling yep, apart. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> the show's gonna implode. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's gonna be great. Damn right. Um, we also have a store. Head on over to GameFanEmployed.com uh, where you can find the link to our Teespring store. We have all kinds of cool uh, original artwork and designs uh, themed around our different shows. Uh, and you can get them on t-shirts and mugs and stickers and posters, all kinds of shit. So uh, check it out. Yeah, you love it. You do. And, you love and it. Happy Mulder Day. Oh, bless. have a blessed Mulder Day. Yeah. It's, it, may your day be filled. That's it. Yeah, may your day be filled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Artwork for Fox Mulder's A Maniac is produced by Starlene Hodge. Follow her on Twitter at Starlene X. That's Starlene with an X. Or check out her delightful webcomic at rubywhipple.com. <laughs>